Julia, what are the plans for questions? Were you wanting to take them from the chat box as we go along? Did you want me to use my common sense about it? Did you want to leave it till the end? Oh, we've lost our presenter now. Can everybody else hear me at the moment? My rather tired voice. Thank you, Donna. Fine. Just bear with me just for a moment. I don't quite know what happened to our presenter then. She seemed to disappear. I shall keep an eye on her popping back in again. And um, we can uh, ask her to speak to us. That's strange. First time that's happened today. This is the 23rd presentation as well. So we've done very well. Does anybody want to start a short conversation in the chat box about something? Ah, oh, she's back. Hi, Julia. Just Sorry wait. about that. <laughs> Hello, Julia. Can We're... you hear me? Well, I can hear you fine, yes. What happened there? Good. Good. You're a bit quiet. All of a sudden, the computer just shut itself off. I don't know what happened. Oh, it happens to us. You're a little so, bit um, you're a little bit quiet, Julia. Could you possibly either get nearer to the mic or turn up the microphone next to the green thing at the top of the screen? I can do that. I how how do I sound now? Better? Still not as loud as you were before you disappeared. Okay, so adjust my How's that? Oh, anyway. that sounds good. That sounds okay. good. Great. Okay, so I can um, uh, just advance the screens using the arrow at the bottom. Is that how that works? Yes, you can indeed. Okay, very good. Go. Great, thank you. So today I wanted to talk to you about oral health during pregnancy. At NYU, we were uh, fortunate enough to get a, a rather large grant of $5 million to study oral health. And so we've been very involved in oral health and folding oral health into all of um, our curriculum. So for all of the midwifery students, as well as the nurse practitioner students that are at a graduate level in our university, each specialty has oral health and, and, and the discussion about how oral health is important and how it uh, uh, can affect pregnancy is really what I wanted to talk to you about today. So we know that um, there are oral systemic health problems that are very common to pregnant women and that they, um, what we might not know is that they have an, an incredible significance for the overall health of both the mother and the baby. And so um, today I just want to talk to you, make sure that you're aware of those of the things that are significant about oral health and what we can do to help these moms and ultimately help the baby. So today you're going to understand the importance of the oral systemic health during pregnancy. You're going to look at six oral health conditions and their effects on pregnancy and how to manage them. And hopefully this will lead to improved outcomes for both the mothers and the babies. I'm also going to talk to you about things that you might do in your clinical setting that we found helpful here when we're thinking about oral health. So let me see if I can get this to come up. So in the United States, and I did not look at oral health 
in every country or anything else like that. We haven't looked at it internationally. But in the United States, we know that almost half of women who recently gave birth did not have a dental visit in the past year. So they're probably all missing at least one visit um, and maybe many more. Because we know out of those, half of those women, that 18% or one out of five have never had their teeth cleaned in their life ever, which means they probably have never been to a dentist. Um, and those, that's not really acceptable for a pregnancy. It's not really the thing that we want to um, have be part of a pregnant woman's health. So 40% of the women have some for, form of periodontal disease. And periodontal disease has a great number of um, sequela that I want to talk about today. So um, can I just uh, stop for a moment and ask if uh, people have questions, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, I guess if you put them in the chat box, I can, I'll keep trying to check over and see if there's anything. Is, is that the way that you've been doing this in the past? We do it whichever way you it's, where, it's whichever way you wish it to be. So if you like, okay. you concentrate on your presentation. And if I see a question that needs answered right then, I will interrupt you. How about that? That sounds great. Thank you, Linda. Actually, so, there's a question straight away that you, you perhaps need to, either, uh, to define. Oh, I see. There's a question about periodontal. So periodontal disease means gum disease, or and gum disease, of course, is going to affect your teeth and cavities and that type of thing. Is that, Carrie, do you understand the word now? Sure. So anytime. So please, that's that's exactly the right kind of question. You know, if you don't understand what the word is, then it's then the presentation is not going to help you very much. So please uh, don't don't hesitate to ask. So um, so there are a number of different oral health problems during pregnancy that we're going to look at today. Gingivitis is one of them, periodontitis, tooth decays, which is tooth decay or, or caries, um, enamel erosion from uh, vomiting or reflux, and pregnancy granuloma. So I'm going to explain each one of these to you and let you know what can be done during pregnancy. So we'll just go through these one at a time. So if you look up at the top here, you're going to see a, a nice little presentation of healthy gums. So we want gums to be pink and firm. We don't want them to bleed. When you have healthy gums, like that's pictured in the top, what you, will have, what you have is basically a barrier to your systemic system. So Nothing is going to get into your bloodstream when your gums are healthy. It's there to protect your, your, uh, the rest of your systemic system. And down at the bottom, we have something called gingivitis. So um, gingivitis, the gums are soft. They are um, swollen. They can be edematous. And they can um, bleed bleeding, right? So they'll bleed when you brush. They may bleed when you floss. Um, and you know, that's, that's not what we want to see happen. So, um, and it's very common in pregnant women. Of course, 25 to 75% of pregnant women uh, will have bleeding gums. And I, for us, I mean, we, we used to say all the time, well, that's, that's normal. It's the, it is the influence. There are some hormones that influence pregnancy that make your gums bleed a little bit, but they really should only bleed I mean, I don't, I, I don't know that they should really bleed at all. We've always thought it was normal, but maybe, maybe it isn't. Maybe we should really question anymore whether that's normal or whether you have to have bleeding gums during pregnancy. So we know that gums bleed because they're not taken care of. We know that um, people don't brush enough or they eat the wrong foods or they don't brush as often as they should or floss. And we know that hormones, the hormones of pregnancy, will actually exacerbate um, gingivitis. So enamel erosion is another um, thing that we want to think about because uh, so many women are nauseous for so long. We hope that, you know, by 14 weeks, 16 weeks, somewhere in there that they will stop uh, vomiting. I mean, personally, I can just tell you my own, I was nauseous for nine months. So 
you know, it, you can have, you know, nausea and vomiting for a very, very long time. And that acid in the vomit or the reflux can actually erode the enamel and make uh, so that cavities can get into the teeth more easily. So um, the way that we can help pregnant women is to have them uh, reduce that acid by rinsing with water or water and baking soda. Um, I see that you get free dental care in the UK. Yes, we love that about you. And um, uh, we get free dental care here in many states in the United States because we have federally funded health centers. And actually, in the, in the United States, many of the women can get free dental care for two years. So um, we really encourage them to get in not only while they're pregnant, but to continue after they're pregnant. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Another thing that uh, pregnant women get that's very common is a pregnancy granuloma. We know that five to 10% of women get this. Some women get it every single time that they have a, a pregnancy. Uh, it's benign, it's not a problem. It's a lesion on the, on the, can be on the gum, the lips, the tongue, and it's caused by irritation um, from poor dental hygiene. It usually resolves after delivery. It also can come from heart, it's hormonal. Um, and that you don't need to worry about it, but only you can worry about it if it starts to bleed or if it gets in the way of chewing um, or mastication, you wanna remove it uh, or have it removed by a dentist. So um, this is something really that, that you don't need to worry about too much unless it causes a problem for the mom. So caries, cavities, tooth decay, uh, results from poor oral hygiene, high frequency of sugar intake. Um, so what happens is that we have the bacteria from the carbohydrates metabolizes and then gets breaks through the enamel and causes the cavity, which can then go up to the root of the tooth. Um, it also makes much bigger problems for the mom and the baby. Um, I, I don't tell the story too too often, but one of our uh, one of the midwives here in uh, the states was telling me about one of her moms who was eight months pregnant, and she had a obviously um, a tooth decay and a carry, and it developed into an abscess, and she went um, into the the uh, emergency room to be taken care of because her jaw was swollen and she was in a lot of pain and no one would care for her. And um, so during the, while she was there, they just sent her home and said, no, you're pregnant, you're too pregnant, we can't, we won't care for you. And the next day she came in and she had, uh, her baby was fine the night before, but her baby, um, uh, she had a stillbirth and the cause, they did an autopsy and the cause was that she, the same bacteria that she had in her mouth from the abscess had gotten into her bloodstream and, and uh, into her systemic system and caused the baby to die. And then subsequently, really a few days later, the mom also died, passed away. So um, just all from a toothache. And so I, that's why I think it's so important. Yeah, really a very sad story. Um, and, and that's why I wanna bring this information to you. And I'm not sure if these are pregnant teeth or not. I see that question, but um, so, you know, I. Yeah, teeth or teeth, whether they're pregnant or whether they're not, they still look like this if, they're, if they have caries. Sometimes they look like this, and sometimes it just looks like a black spot or it can look like a shadow. So we talked a little bit earlier about um, uh, gingivitis, and periodontitis is um, an even worse, um, like untreated gingivitis. So this is the thing we're really trying to avoid. So gingivitis, you can see, as I told you before, you're going to have some edematous gums. They're going to be swollen, tender, inflamed. They're likely to bleed. Okay, that's one part of it. And once you start bleeding, once you have that bleeding in, in the mouth, then you've got an opening right to the systemic system, right? So just think of it that way. So what happens with periodontitis is that the gingivitis goes even further, and it destructs the the gums and the bones that support the teeth. And we used to say, 
um, okay, so, you know, they're one, two, three each pregnancy, but this is totally preventable and really preventable um, just by getting some good dental care and some oral health care. Um, you can see on the bottom photograph that there's advanced periodontitis and that periodontitis um, is really exposing caries that were created and uh, you know, when we used to say people got long of long of tooth, well, that was really periodontal disease that was, um, you know, exacerbated, and and we want to uh, really truly avoid this if we can. So there are some other um, sequela uh, that we can that I'm going to um, bring to you. And yes, I do have links for further resources uh, to share with mothers to to be. Um, but let me go on with the rest of this first, and then I'll give you some resources. So here I talked a little bit about this. So that there's gram-negative bacteria, endotoxins from that inflammatory products in your mouth. And there's, there's hundreds of bacteria in your mouth all the time. And so what we really want to do is when we get gingivitis or periodontitis, we have all these gram-negative bacteria, and they can go systemically disseminate through, from the mouth into the um, uh, fetus. So we, we know that gram-negative bacteria is what's in bacterial vaginosis. And so that bacterial vaginosis is definitely linked with preterm labor. Well, this is same gram-negative gram bacteria. It, I mean, some of the, uh, the information that we have now says there is a, there's a link to preterm labor and preterm birth. The evidence isn't really strong yet, so I'm going to just let me put that disclaimer out there. But, you know, if you have gram-negative bacteria in your system, why would you want that at all when we can prevent it? So we get the, the gram-negative bacteria that leads to increased prostaglandins. We know that high prostaglandins lead to preterm labor and preterm birth, and that we get cytokines are also produced from the endotoxins, and that this is associated with um, spontaneous rupture of membranes, preterm birth, and possible infection. So, um, so I just to keep you, you know, keep these things in mind as as a possibility, and why it's important to keep a pregnant mother's mouth healthy. So, preterm labor. The other thing about periodontitis is that there's definitely really good evidence for the association with poor glycemic control, and so. Um, the control of diabetes and the control of gestational diabetes becomes more difficult when we have um, a mom with periodontitis. So they affect each other, um, blood glucose control. This is a, someone asked me um, the other day, I was showing this picture and they said, well, what is that? That's a, a pregnant mom uh, testing, her, um, testing her finger to uh, check her blood sugar. So we certainly want them to do that, and we want them to stay under good control by not having periodontitis. So I think one of the, the most important messages that I want you to take home from this today is that it's essential to have dental care during pregnancy. Ultimately, we'd like them to have it before they even get pregnant, but if you get a mom in and she has not had any dental care, we want to get her in to, for dental care and a cleaning and an evaluation right away. We don't want her to be afraid of the dentist. We don't want the dentist to be afraid of her. And sometimes it is because of the dentist. It's not always, um, uh, you know, it's not always that the, the uh, I'm sorry, I was reading this, the questions on the side. I'm going to stop doing that. I'll let Linda, you'll interrupt me. Um, so what I was trying to say is that sometimes it's the dentist that is the problem. Some dentists won't care for pregnant women. And that needs to, we need to really think about that a little bit too. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So consistent and regular dental visits are key, especially during pregnancy, more so during pregnancy than any other time. It's not only safe to see the dentist, it's the right choice for the mother and the baby. And it's important that we get to know the dentists in our area so that we can refer our, our um, pregnant moms to them. We are, as midwives, perfectly positioned to be frontline educators for pregnant women um, and about the importance of, of, of their oral health. We may see them four times, we may see them 14 times during a pregnancy, but we can be asking the question each time about their oral health and documenting um, uh, the oral health 
of their of their moms. So let's just think a little bit about this. When you examine the mouth, instead of thinking H E E N T, let's change that. Let's do keynote. Head, eyes, ears, nose, oral cavity, and throat. So think of the whole entire head, all right? And let's make sure that we do not, you know, use he not so that you don't forget the oral cavity. We want to encourage regular uh, brushing and flossing. We want to refer all our pregnant women for dental care. Every single one of them should go for dental care. And we want to make sure that we discuss a healthy diet because, yes, eating lots of sweets and everybody wants to eat whatever they want during pregnancy. But the reality is, is that, you know, you're, it's more important to be careful about your diet during pregnancy than any other time in your life. So the other thing, the other time that we can talk to moms, and we're going to go a little bit back and forth here, but I want to just think about this a little bit, is after birth. So when your mom has, a, you know, it is, you know, chewing the food and then giving it to the baby, and she has a, a carry in her mouth, or she has that bacteria in her mouth, she is transferring it right from her mouth into the baby's mouth. If that pacifier falls on the ground and she picks it up and she puts it in her mouth first, before she puts it in the in the baby's mouth, she is transferring that bacteria. Okay, so mothers, what we know is that mothers with high rates of caries are more likely to have children with high rates of caries, and this is such a preventable disease. You do, children don't have to have high rates of caries either, but you definitely don't want to chew their food. You don't want to be you know passing that pacifier, and you want to make sure. I mean, it's it, it, we like we like to say that we want those babies to get in. By the time they're a year old, they should have a dental home, a, a place where they can go, where they can call the, where the mom can take them to the dentist. Now, how many teeth do they have? Not that many at one year. But what they do have is the, the potential to get caries, and then they can also learn from the dentist how to take care of their children's teeth. And so that they can help prevent caries. So we can tell them, make sure you see a dentist. Um, they should be wiping out the baby's mouth, even before teeth erupt, we want to have them wipe out with either a piece of clean gauze or a clean washcloth. So another goal is that we want to promote, again, oral hygiene for all pregnant mothers and encourage regular dental visits during pregnancy. Some of the things that we do when um, OBs, we know obstetricians generally do not refer to dental care, and that's why I think it's so important for midwives and nurse practitioners to be doing that. Um, we like to create a list in the neighborhood of the dentist, and then we call them and ask them if they accept Medicaid. That's our insurance, our health insurance here. Um, so I think if you can create a list for your patients, that is really, really helpful for them so that they don't have to go through, um, you know, the the a phone list of dentists and try to, you know, get in and see who to call and who will take them. Um, so we find out whether they accept the insurance and also whether they'll see pregnant patients. And then we reassure the patients, I think, that the pregnant moms, we want to let them know that, you know, it's safe to see the dentist, that prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of oral conditions is safe, and that you can have x-rays if you have abdominal shielding. So if you have the steel apron, then you'll be fine. If you have, uh, you can use local anesthesia during pregnancy. It's safe during pregnancy. The other thing is that we want to make sure we talk about oral hygiene about the newborn uh, because we know that early prevention leads to lifelong prevention of childhood caries. And um, we want to make sure that moms know not to, you know, not to check that food before she puts it in the baby's mouth. I mean, she can check the, the heat of it, but she shouldn't put the same food that's been in her mouth in the baby's mouth or the pacifier. So a healthy mouth leads to a healthy mother, which equals a healthy baby. And so it's just one other part, I think, of prenatal care, of postpartum care, that we need to um, make sure that we bring this to our midwifery practice um, so that we can help prevent unnecessary sequela 
to both mom and baby. So in terms of, let me just answer one of the questions that was asked before. And this is the end of my presentation. Um, one of the uh, moms before, or one of the midwives before asked about a reference. And I'd like to refer you to smilesforlife.org. Um, and I put that in the chat room um, because it's it's a a, a a fantastic website that you can um, go to and it's it's free it's totally free and you can do the modules and they give you free CEUs um, and and you can uh, take advantage of their of their modules that are really well done that have great questions and great uh, CEUs for you to have for your midwifery. And you're very, very welcome. I'm glad that you like the reference. Um, let me just see if I can see if there's any other questions here. Do any other education programs in the UK include oral health? I, I'm not, if you're asking me, I'm not sure. Um, and do NHS dentists look after pregnant women or do they get turned away here? Um, yeah, I don't know that. I listen. I know. I I was speaking to a dentist the the other day, and I asked him. He's a retired dentist, and I said, "Did you take care of pregnant women?" And he said, "Absolutely not." I told him they could come back when they were done being pregnant. So I, you know, I think I think the younger dentists now are thinking more about doing this. Um, and I think uh, you might want to refer to a dental school uh, because the dental schools are going to have, of course, you know, you're sending them for a cleaning and an evaluation. They don't have to have the work done there if they need work. But I think that it's a great place to go for um, a beginning visit. I know your student knows. Hi, specific. Julia. You're welcome. Let me just see if Julia. there's any, any other questions. Julia, can you hear me clear? Pardon me? Julia. Yes. Julia? Yeah, hi. It's Claire, the facilitator. <laughs> hi, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm very sorry about the technical issues at the start, but uh, that was an excellent presentation, um, and I'm sure everybody enjoyed that. Um, I think a lot of the questions that are coming through and what about the UK, which obviously you're not able to kind of answer for us. So, but a really informative and excellent presentation that you gave for us. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to do <laughs> it. Smiles for life or healthy. There was a question we didn't answer, and that was from one of the students who asked whether or not um, diet had an effect on teeth. Maybe you should answer that one. Yes, yeah. So of course, um, diet has uh, diet does have, of course, a uh, effect. And uh, the the thing is, is this. So a lot of us, and we like to encourage our pregnant women to snack every couple of hours, right? That's the way they're going to get rid of their nausea and vomiting. But the problem is, is that we keep introducing those carbohydrates over and over and over again, and so we're just introducing the potential for the endotoxins to get started and then the cytokines. So um, it does make a difference. It makes a difference how often. I mean, I think if I were a pregnant woman and she was going to eat every couple of hours, I'd say, listen, if you can carry a soft toothbrush around with you, it doesn't have to be a, a hard toothbrush, a soft toothbrush, and try to brush as often as you can throughout the day. Um, because we want you to eat every two hours or three hours, but we, we, and we want you to have good, healthy snacks. But even a good, healthy snack, even an apple, can create a cavity. So certainly, the things that are going to have a higher carbohydrate, like candy or chocolate or something like that, is going to, is going to, is going to have even more potential to create caries. Um, the other thing that they like to recommend here in the states, the de the dentists like to recommend, and I'm not a, a huge fan of it myself, but they like to recommend xylitol gum. So gum that has xylitol in it. Um, would, it kills the gram-negative bacteria. And so they say if you can't brush, chew gum with xylitol. So, 
So let's see. Um, somebody was going off to floss. Good for you. <laughs> I think Ella had a question about the gram negative bacteria. Is it present in the mouth naturally? Yeah, well, the, there's hundreds of different types of bacteria in the mouth. So if someone were to swab your mouth right now or even swab it after you get done brushing, there's bacteria there. So the problem mm -hmm. is, is when you have the gingivitis or enamel erosion or periodontitis, that you have an opening to the systemic system. So you're, if, you're, if, your gums are, if your gums are bleeding, then that's an opening, right, to the systemic system. Just like if you were to, you can get um, gonorrhea through, you know, through your system by orally. Um, so I think that the, 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 you're, you're, you have that opening to the, to the system and the gram-negative bacteria might be there, but it's not, it doesn't, it can't get into your system unless you have these oral conditions. That's, that's the take home message. So if we can get those gums healthy, um, you know, then we can prevent the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the bacteria from going systemic. And the, the xylitol, yes, I, xylitol um, is a good product for some people. I, I think that uh, too much xylitol has been um, associated with uh, if you're going to do tons of it with memory loss and with, um, uh, I think one of the other side effects might be GI upset, those kinds of things. Um, you know, anything that you put, any kind of chemical you put into your body, I, you know, you, I always worry about that. Um, so I, I'm not so crazy about it, but um, so let me see. Someone else is asking about the hormones of pregnancy. Well, it's, that's a very good question. So the question is, the hormones of pregnancy only cause problems if they are already dental problems or, or experiencing excessive nausea. Right, we keep telling pregnant women that bleeding gums are normal. And I would say to you that I think we need to challenge that. Is it normal? It's, it's the, um, uh, you know, are the hormones the things that are making gums bleed? If your gums were really healthy in the beginning, and you're taking your prenatal vitamins and have a good diet, would your gums bleed? I mean, I just don't know that it's normal. I, I'm actually starting to really question whether it's normal or not. That is another great topic for research. Excellent. I think some of the students are asking whether educators in the UK include dental health in their program. I mean, certainly in the, at my university, um, I don't recall anything being taught, but Linda may correct me there, it may have been in first year, but it's really interesting to get it brought back into the limelight again. So does anyone over from the UK know if they all have had training in dental care? The only thing that we teach, um, Claire, is that you shouldn't have dental work yeah. uh, if you've got a cardiac condition um, or even a suspicion of a cardiac condition because of the risk of mm -hmm. um, septic sepsis throughout the system. But no, I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think we teach it. I can't remember ever seeing it on the on the timetable at all. We're probably no, really interesting as well. We're a bit out of date, obviously. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Does anyone else have any other questions for Julia? No? What's the chat going on? <laughs> Obviously don't teach it in Australia either. Yes, thank you, thank you, Michelle. Thank you for correcting the website. I appreciate that. I'm sorry I had it a little shortened there. Oh, sorry, New Zealand. <laughs> Can I ask um, um, Julia if there are, for the sake of the students, if there are certain foods that are particularly good for suggesting to these women who suffer from nausea 
um, to kind of keep that at bay that won't damage their teeth. Well, every single food that you put in your mouth has the potential to damage your teeth. So, you know, even the healthiest foods can damage your teeth and have carbohydrates, like fresh fruit has carbohydrates. So, um, in terms of um, pregnant moms with nausea and vomiting, our recommendations are uh, to do small meals frequently, of course, and then, um, you know, the other things that we like to recommend are B vitamins, B6, 50 milligrams of B6, once in the morning and once at night. Um, I think peppermint oil is very helpful to carry around. I think mint, anything mint um, is good. Um, I like, there's a, there's a, and I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it, but the Chinese make a little um, ginger candy, like it's a hard candy, which is fabulous also. So we do like small amounts of ginger or small amounts of mint um, are, are really, can be very helpful for some women. And I, I think just a lot of small meals of whatever you can keep down. I mean, basically, we don't want them to go without eating. They're growing a baby. Um, so, uh, you know, to do as, as much as they can um, and then try to brush or carry, you know, a toothbrush around with them and just to try to keep their, to, if they eat, if they can brush. I mean, listen, I can remember gagging when I was pregnant also. Even the toothbrush would make me gag. So it's a, it's a, a difficult problem to approach, but it's one that we need to pay attention and just do the very best that we can with. Um, of course, you know, everything that a pregnant woman puts in her mouth is making a baby. So, of course, you want the freshest. You want the most organic, you want, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, good high quality proteins, uh, whole grains. Those are, I mean, that, that's really what, you, what we want to promote as much as we can. And quite honestly, I'm going to tell you, if my pregnant mom comes to me and she says, the only thing I can eat is potato chips, everything else makes me throw up, I'm going to say, okay, enjoy the potato chips. But as soon as you can, switch off of those chips and get into something else. I hope that helps. Yeah, that was great, Julia. <laughs> I think as well, um, in terms of education, probably getting in young, if people are known about dental hygiene from a young age as well, then hopefully it will travel through their life. But unfortunately, being pregnant, sometimes you can save the most unhealthy things. So mm -hmm. it's just to be prepared with information for all our ladies. Does anyone have any other questions for Julia? Talking about the use of propolis. Insert, are you aware of that, Julia? Hmm. It's a great comment, actually. Yeah. I don't have much um, uh, experience with propolis uh, tincture, but on um, it sounds like a something to investigate for sure. And I appreciate that this can be different in different circumstances, different countries, different access to food. Um, Tammy was asking um, Julia just about using coconut oil and splashing it around the mouth. Yeah, that's Maybe an that something that I've never heard of that, but that's so interesting. 
that seems like a, you know an interesting uh, approach. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to share what you teach at midlife? Oh yes. So in the um, let me yeah I can tell you a little bit how we've incorporated it into the curriculum. So we start with that um, he not. So right in health assessment, they learn how to do an oral health exam, and we also do an interprofessional education day where we'll have a dentist and a midwife and a doctor together in a room, and they're all doing taking care of a different body system. And the dentist student will teach the midwifery student and the doctor how to do an oral exam and what they're looking for. So we um, so that's part of our health assessment. So you do that he not um, as part of right from the very beginning when you're doing a head to toe assessment. Um, yeah, the he not is really cool, right? I thought that that's a very good. My dean came up with that. It's a great idea. And then um, we do uh, so we talk about um, oral health. Uh, right from the very beginning in our gynecology courses and, and talking about adding um, a questions about oral health to um, uh, every even GYN visit. So, uh, you know, so you're asking questions about, well, diabetes and, you know, your kidneys and, and, you know, everything else. Why not ask, when was the last time you went to the dentist? So we want to just keep bringing it into people's minds. You know, it's important to get your teeth clean too. That's another part of your health. Um, the you know mouth is like a window to your health, right? So let's let's think about that a little bit. And then the other thing is um, during uh, antepartum care, of course, again we start to talk about oral care and making sure that all of our uh, patients are going to see the dentist. So that's part of what our students have to do. And when they have when they write a note about seeing a patient, we look to make sure that each note includes you know either questions about oral health or that they've done an oral health exam. And then, um, and you can learn how to do the oral health exam on the smilesforlifeforhealth.org. They will teach you right there in those modules. And they also have some great brochures that you can hand out that you can give out for adult health and for pregnancy care, oral health. So please explore that website a little bit. Um, it's gonna be very helpful to you. And then the other thing that we do in terms of for the patients when we're, or for the midwifery students is that we fold it into the postpartum course also, because we want them to, to really, that's the time when you're sitting with a mother, you're talking to her about nursing, she's nursing the baby, you can, you have a few minutes then to inform her about how to take really good care of her baby's mouth, so that she can wipe the mouth out when she's done nursing, that she can make sure the baby gets to a dentist by year one, by the end of the first year, that she that um, she doesn't do the pacifier and food thing back and forth with the with the baby. Um, that she don't chew the food for the baby. Some I know in some cultures that that moms want to chew the food up and then give it to the baby. That's that you know that's not a great thing to do. It's a uh, not a good thing for your baby. And so just incorporating that into our postpartum, our um, antepartum and uh, our GYN courses are really are, are the places where I, we bring it in the most. And we also have the students do, um, we, they also talk about it in primary care, in their primary care course, but we also have the students do, uh, make a brochure. And they make a brochure that's a health, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> a health literacy um, oral health brochure to give out to their patients. So. Um, and it has to be on a, on a, you know, really health literate. They have to make sure it's on a fourth or fifth grade level and that it's not too complex and that they can give it out to all moms and they have to do it in two languages. So it really helps that, um, helps for them to be thinking about, uh, we give them little assignments so that they're thinking about oral health. Um, and I'm happy to, to um, I'm gonna give you my um, address right now. And you can, if any educators would like to um, contact me or ask me about curriculum, I'm happy to share any uh, hints that I can give you. That's great, Julia. Fantastic. I was just about to say if you could share the knowledge with the educators. I do think that the students would really enjoy and benefit from finding out about oral health and pregnancy. That's great. Mm -hmm. so does anyone else have any further questions for Julia as we come to a close? If 
It's been I just I don't think there's any more. So what? can I just sorry, Julia. <laughs> I'd just like to say to you that it's been the uh, uh, my honor and a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Julia. It's been a great presentation and we appreciate you coming to speak to us today. So thank you very much for all the useful information that you've given us. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And happy International okay. Midwives Day, everyone. Oh, and you, Julia. <laughs> Okay, Claire, are you going? I think that's ringing. Oh, yep. <laughs> Great you going to go through the final? Great mind, Linda. Yeah, I'll go through the final um, slide. So, thank you, Julia, again, for coming to speak today. That's been really great. I'm just going to turn off the record now, if nobody's got any, any other comments.